Hey everybody, it's your buddy Chris Delion here. I just got back from Thailand because Laura and I just got married. So congratulations to us. We had our honeymoon there and we got married in Dallas. Document uh, create element. Which also means that between the two of those things, this is the longest I have been in my adult life without writing program code. So this is probably going to be kind of a mess in places today. Would not consider this even a speed coding video. It's not by my standards of not really all that put together and kind of out of practice. Document uh, fill rect is probably the function. Um, but as a reminder, the reason why in general I can program a lot of stuff without having to do a lot of checking is because my job every single day is literally walking people through code uh, via Skype screen share where I'm just talking to them. And uh, because of that and child, I don't have the luxury of constantly checking autocompletes and test running. But today we will do some test running to kind of show. It's also going to just color syntax highlighting sooner rather than later. There's our file. Run it in browser just to show. There's a black canvas. Hopefully this makes it a little easier for people at home to follow along as well. It's kind of just, just the gist of what's going on. So our update function we're going to be calling constantly. That's going to begin by doing a black redraw of the screen. Going to use set interval to call update 30 times a second. So 1,000 milliseconds divided by 30, that frequency. Now let's also draw a white box for the player's base. Oh, by the way, today we're going to be making like an ack ack attack, uh, PXPY, play with P high, let's calculate with this B. Um, ack ack attack style game, which is like a paratrooper or a night raid kind of experience. And we're going to calculate those with 800 wide, so like 50 height. 30, so I get 20th. So now we'll calculate these two based on those and the canvas size. So to center our character, actually maybe we should make this the center of the character. It'll make that the actual center of the character. So in that case, and this will just be canvas dot width divided by two. And then for PY, we'll make it the bottom of the character base, uh, top of the canvas, top of the canvas base. So height minus PY. And so now in that case, then we're actually gonna draw this as minus P width divided by two. That should center our white square. Let's double check. Hmm. Player height. There it is. There's our white rectangle. Again, I'm going to be super rusty today. Next up, let's get our cannon drawing. That's going to be pretty important for this kind of game. And uh, let's just have like a length variable for a cannon. So like, let's say the cannon's 40 pixels long. So it's very visible. Um, cannon's current angle. Uh, and that's going to be defaulting to zero. Cannon's angular velocity. So it's like how fast it's going to move. It's going to be in radians, so it's going to keep that kind of short and small. And uh, that's probably enough at this point. And of course, for the line, we want to use stroke style. Let's use lime for our line. Move to, it's going to move to PXPY. And then we're going to line to. Oh, told you I'm rusty. We need to begin path before we do any of that stuff. Going to clear our path between times. We need to call a stroke after we do so we don't forget. Let's also set our line width to thicker than one so we can see it better. Line width equals six. I don't know, it's a big old cannon. And now we're going to move to the C length times math dot sine or cosines x. Man, I'll tell you what, I am not all here today. So we're going to go with, uh, <laughs> going to go with. Cosine on X today, and hopefully I'm right about that. If I've got to switch it, we'll refactor that later. Um, sine and cosine. And uh, let's also just keep our cannon rotating for the sake of testing at first before we have inputs, um, which is going to be C angle plus equal C ang velocity, angular velocity. So everybody says, yeah, look at that. We've got a little line moving. Cool. Now nah, it's actually faster than I want for the cannon. Let's retune it. That nah, it seems more like it. Setups because it's a basis, obviously we're increasing, so that's a positive space down there on the bottom. Of course, that's pi is 180, so when it points to the left, which means that if we wanted to limit it, it's going to be like zero to negative pi in the in the domain. Um, so let's start accepting input sooner rather than later. And for that, we're going to do a document .add event listener. Listener. Whenever we have a key down event, hope it's key down. We'll call a function we're going to write key press. Whenever we have key up, we're going to call one called key release. And let's make some variables here for var hold left, 
hold right. Let's default those each to false. We're going to use bool values for those. And uh, oop, down here, we'll say function key press. So if we press the key, we're going to switch on the event we're given, or rather we're going to switch on its key code. I think it's camel case. God, it's been a while. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be like, so remember, so 37 clockwise. Uh, so that's going to be left. And 39 is going to be right. These are key codes for those. And so here we're going to say hold left equals true. And 37 will say hold left equals false. And we'll have also a key released function, which we bound to the release, so the key up event. And those are going to set those to false on each side. This will set this to true on each side. See, I'm only half here. And so now what we'll do is if we're having a holding right at the time, then we're going to move the cannon to the right. If we're holding left, and yeah, we'll clean all this up a little bit. We'll move this to functions and stuff. Then we're going to subtract from it. And now if I refresh, now my left key and my right key aren't doing anything yet. Did I make a typo? Key down, key up, key press, key release. Document dot add event listener. Let's see, is there some sort of console log complaint to me? Key release is not defined. What did I call it? Key press again. There we go. All right, so now, there we go. Left arrow is spinning me around that way. And it looks like I've flip flopped my variables. Yep, hold right. Hold right. Told you I'd be rusty today. That's why we're doing the checks in browser this time. Left and right. There we go. So now I can aim my cannon that we're going to be using to shoot down airplanes and paratroopers above us. And uh, it's crude, it's key only, but it works. And now let's let's limit its domain. And uh, for that we can just say, you know, uh, var... How do we, I guess we want to really limit our cannon based on an angle from the top. So let's say var default cannon ang, may as well be explicit about this, and that's going to be negative math.py divided by two. And so let's default our cannon ang to that. It's going to start off pointing into the sky, but that obviously before the other one. And then let's make one called like cannon ang limit. And so we want that to be, well, first of all, 45 degrees is an easy enough test. So let's say plus or minus math pi divided by four. Math pi divided by two being 90, so that's going to be 45 degrees. And so we can check that each direction off the default cannon ang. I'm going to copy these so don't make typos down here. And after we do the check, we're going to enforce those limits. And we will say if cannon angle is less than default cannon ang minus the limit, then we're going to update it to that value. And if it's greater than it plus that, then we'll limit it to it plus that. And we'll probably give it a little more leeway than that, but just for start. So it starts upright, and now it'll only go plus or minus one eighth of the circle. Right? And then we can play with that value later if we want to tune it. Now in terms of being able to fire shots, we're going to need an array for those shots. Let's save our shot list. Being slightly more generous on these names than we usually do. We need to detect that if we press spacebar, so key press. Case again, that's OX20 or 32 in decimal. And so in that situation, we're going to push. I hope it's push and not add. I use a lot of C sharp and Unity too. Uh, we're going to import into it a new, a new plan into it. Uh, Starting off at PX, PY. So we're going to start at the base of the barrel. Ooh, you know what? Let's start at the end of the barrel. Why not? And uh, we should, we could calculate those. We could cache those. Are we going to? Yeah, I guess. Just because it's going to be too dirty. Um, let's say var C and X. Let's even start camel casing these. Man, who have we become today? Uh... And there's a default, don't have any value, but every single time we move the cannon, we're going to say C and X equals this nastiness. C and X. And by pre-calculating these, it's going to help us too if we want to add like particle effects popping out of the barrel or something. It'll also make this code a tad easier to read. But because these are global, we can use the same things down here. So now the bullets can actually start at the end of the barrel, which will look slightly nicer. So we're starting a bullet at the end of the barrel. Uh, in terms of its direction it's going to move in, that's going to be Cang at the moment. So like moveang equals Kang. 
currently the value of that. And so now let's loop through everything we have in our shot list and do the updates on them. Actually, let's start breaking this out into functions a little bit. Function draw player. And so what's going to go in our draw player function? So we're being a little more deliberate today. So we have the draw cannon. And this could be its own function, but you know, for now, cannon. That'll work. Um, this will be input handling. This is part of the player, that's the base. And I guess the base should really overlap the cannon. It's going to look like it's more in front of it that way. Base. Okay. Uh, that's going to be some input handling. Handle input. Handle input. Ooh, realizing that's actually going to leave C and X and Y undefined the first time it hits the line potentially to fire if we start the game holding on spacebar. So let's give them some non silly values. Uh, even though it's kind of rubbish for the first frame, we're just going to have it equal it just so we don't have an undefined value getting used somewhere. CX and Y. There we go. Not quite right, but close enough. Uh, handling input's going to do that stuff. And then we may as well heck, wrap this in function two. Clear screen. Being away has changed me. Function clear screen. Although, remember, so this is actually a prototype we're going to be using to as a starting point for a club project. So uh, let's just double check when I refresh. Yep, still there. Everything still works. Uh, so there's, I actually have slightly more incentive than I usually do to make this code slightly more legible. Um, speaking of which, while we're at it, let's go ahead and do a find and replace on Siangvel to camel case it. Replace all. I don't want to be that person. Um, we'll keep clan and Kang the same way for now. Okay, so we've got our input. That's right, and we're shooting shots out. So handling input, drawing player. Uh, we've got some draw functions there kind of mixed together. Where's our actual game stuff? Maybe we'll break some more than file. We'll see. Handle input. Uh, let's just call this handle shots. I mean, it's going to both handle and draw them. Good enough for now. Function handle shots is going to loop through our shot list. I equals zero, I less than shot list length. I plus plus, ooh, I plus plus. And so we've got obviously two parts to that, right? We've got to draw our shot. And for that, let's set our canvas context fill style to yellow. And then to draw our shot, we're going to do a fill rect at the position of it, which it has its own X and Y. Um, at I dot X and dot y and uh maybe pixel off in each direction make it a three by three make it plenty visible so this will cause it to be visible and then we also want it to move and we could actually just add the sine and cosine onto it as well as its speed i wonder if there's any reason why you wouldn't want to do that well let's 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 go with that so let's set it's each one's speed by default to two pixels a frame that might be a whole lot might be not very much but we'll try it as a starting point uh, no equal sign, colon, thank you, me. And so now we go up in here to our loop, and in our handle shots, each frame, we're going to add to its x and y the current amount of that. Uh, that's its speed times the math dot. And we're using cosine for x, right? I feel awful. My head is just not there right now. Um, and we had an angle on it? Didn't we? Moving. Yeah, that's better because because like if it was a rocket, it could be a different angle it's facing than the direction it's moving in. Maybe we'll have some cool power ups and stuff later. Um, not in this video. I just mean like when the club works on this game more. So, so cosine and sine is going to move the shot along, and so now we should have shots get moved. We're calling handle shots. Let's see what happens. And if I press spacebar, pew 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 pew. Yeah, check it out. Shooting shots. Yeah, there's no auto fire yet. We can do that. Um, but there's a starting point. We can have shots removed when they leave the screen. But uh, right now, let's uh, let's not care, because whatever. Uh, let's have some enemies start happening. That seems helpful. Enemy list. And I'm kind of doing this thing where, again, I'm kind of abusing object literals inline uh, as if it's some sort of class, which it kind of is. But we're not really defining a whole class definition, just to keep things light and airy. Let's have enemies spawn on a separate timer. Enemy spawn. Wow, my spelling. So every, let's say, I don't know, is twice a second too much? It's once a second. Let's have once a second an enemy gets spawned. Function enemy spawn. 
And so to spawn the enemy, then we're going to randomly decide whether or not we are going to spawn the enemy on the left or right side. And so let's save our new enemy. Gross. Uh, just make an object at first. And let's have a random chance. So if math.random is less than 0 0.5, then it's going to come from one side of the screen, else from the other. And so if coming from the left side of the screen, uh, we decided it was push, right? Not add. Add sounds like the C sharp. We're going to add new enemy here. So in that case, then new enemy dot X will equal. So we're going to go from the left side to the right. So it's going to equal zero. And then new enemy speed X, bell X, VX for velocity X. That works for me. Um, no Y values yet. Maybe we'll do that later. So then we're going to have it go to the right at, uh, let's make a constant for this just because we're being nice today. Enemy speed equals four. Let's not mix that in the middle of the cannons though. There we go. Let's do some slight tidying. All right, so in that case, gonna go that way. Otherwise, we're gonna spawn from the right side, which would be canvas.width, and the velocity is gonna be negative four. And the height, let's first set vertical velocity to zero. And the height will be math.random. Let's see, how do I think about this? Times enemy spawn band height thickness, yeah, plus enemy spawn band margin. So now I can find some constants up here for that stuff. And sometimes I'll use all capitals for const from kind of a C tradition, but not going to bother today. Just getting back home, getting back in the swing of things. So thickness of the screen 600 tall, so let's say a thickness of like. 200 is a third of the screen, and a margin of 50 seems reasonable. Uh, so now we got to loop through those lists and draw those elements as well, as well as moving them. So let's do it like we did for handle shots, except it's going to be called handle enemies. And uh, inside of handle enemies, let's draw enemies as orange, because orange is evil. I make replace all these calls here with enemy list in terms of what we're drawing, where we're drawing it. Let's make them wider. Let's give some values here for the size of an enemy. Um, var enemy, I guess we might as well keep this consistent. Um, e width will equal, so the player is like 50, so 40. And then E height, maybe like 25, maybe. All right, that's, that's reasonable. So then down here, we're going to do the enemy stuff. Then this will be enemy width, enemy height. And let's draw it from the center of the position. As long as we, as long as we can semi-consistent, then we're going to be okay. Height minus E height divided by 2. Since we're starting them right on the edges of the screen, this kind of seems the most sense for now. I might go back and change that decision later. And the movement code is going to be a little easier. No trig operations here, since we are just giving it directly uh, velocity values in that element xv and we could cache the element off the array list and all that shenanigan we're, we're not obviously we are super not concerned today about optimizing stuff handle enemies is drawing and updating them and if we try it oh no where's he going where are they going all right let's see what's up um something's clearly wrong xv yv aha uh -huh. x velocity x velocity y velocity flipped them Try it again. There we go. Neon. Pow, 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 pow. Pow, pow, pow. Fun game. Okay, so now that we have fun game. Also, bullet shots seem too slow. Uh, let's keep our constants kind of up here. Cannon stuff. Player stuff. I guess this is like var cannon shot speed equals five. Let's replace that hard-coded 2.0 with that so we have a faster player shot and now we want the enemies to uh to, to drop down enemy bad dudes now again these planes still exist off the side of the screen we can clean them up on the off screen we'll deal with all that later we can even make a super class that does all this stuff for both then we just don't care right now the computer's fine we're on a modern processor plenty of ram to deal with it's all good uh and let's call this uh falling bad guys no paratroopers it's pretty explicit yeah paratroopers all right, so starting with an empty list and uh, enemy spawn, 
So that's the main enemy stuff. Enemy updates. So handle enemies. Let's say the enemies are going to drop a bad guy over the play field. And we... Ooh, one of the things about this game, right, is we don't want them to actually drop a paratrooper over our base. So we're going to have, like, a margin on either side of the base. And so what if we think of it as the enemy plane picks the spot where when it crosses that line, it'll drop the dude. That lets us decide the distribution we want to use. Um, that seems seems reasonable enough to me. So when we create the enemy, enemy spawn, we're going to pick the drop position. So let's say new enemy drop X. That's going to first equal canvas.width uh, math.random. And this will make it easier too if we want to come in there and force some sort of margin, uh, which, you know, we could do right now. Uh, maybe we should. No, let's let's get it. Let's keep it simple at first. So let's pick a random X. Uh, we're not going to deal with the base drop protection yet, but pick a random X. And we'll make one called, as well, has dropped yet equals false. So when we cross that line, then we'll flip that variable and we'll, we'll spawn the little faller person. So handling enemies, and let's see here. If we have not dropped our person, true, we're going to flip it. So we haven't dropped our person. Uh, and so one or two things are going to happen. Either we are moving to the right. If we're moving to the right, so positive x velocity, and we are to the right of our drop position, or the other direction. And if we're going to the left, and we are left of the drop position, then we're going to drop a person. Start to comment these. Um, if dropped yet. Yeah, I see. There we are. Doing something weird there. Maybe we got too many parentheses mismatched or something. That seems all right. All right. If dropped yet for handle enemies. Keeping us straight here. Crossing drop line. I feel like there's something iffy about that positioning, but maybe it's fine. So enemies dropped yet. So here we're going to add. Ooh, why is it doing this funny indentation? What is up? I know someone out there is watching this and see. Let's copy and paste again in place. Sometimes that'll fix some indentation, depending on our editor. All right, well, whatever. We're going to run with it and figure out why it is doing that to us. That makes sense. That makes sense. I don't get why it's going there. But, well, so if it hasn't dropped yet, we'll, we'll have this bite us in the butt and we'll come back and we'll do it. So this is the list was called. Oh, right, let's be more consistent. Trooper list. There we go. So in that case, we're going to spawn an enemy into the thing. Trooper list dot push. And this enemy is going to be at X position will be the same as the plane. Y position will be the planes Y plus, I don't know, some sort of margin. Let's say like drop below plane margin. Um, const drop below plane margin equals 10 pixels, 8 pixels, 7 pixels, who knows. Okay, jump to that spot of the code. So we're going to spawn it there, and uh, and then it can fall and stuff. And we don't have to give a hard-coded x and y velocity to it, because they're all going to fall at the same speed. So maybe that's enough. Handle enemies, in theory, should handle both planes and paratroopers for each plane. We really could have called enemy list planes, but didn't really think about that, do we? Um, paratroopers. So now we're going to do the same kind of loop through our list. And except that this list, ooh, it's still funny on the indentation. There's still something we're looking in that mess. It's kind of inherent, isn't it? Anytime you do this kind of structure. Whatever. We're going to live with it. It's going to be fine. Everything's okay. So we're going to loop through the trooper list. And we're going to draw oof. Uh, for each trooper. Let's set some dimensions for the troopers. These could be constants. In fact, let's make them so. Const, const, const. 
const. There we go. Since we don't expect those numbers to change, we'll make them constants. Trooper width and height should be way smaller than a plane. Maybe like 10 wide, and uh, I guess it should be taller than they are wide. 12, then 7, 10 seems tall. 8 by 12? 7 by 12? 13. 7 by 13. Nailed it. Trooper width and height. So, let's see, we push an enemy in there, and for each enemy we're drawing. So, let's also draw them from, let's actually make their origin point their feet. Just because, you know, maybe everything should have a different origin point. It's actually because when they get to the bottom and they walk, it's going to feel like it's going to be easier for us to deal with them that way. And uh, we could later implement some sort of more robust system to keep all the straight origin point differences, but it's going to work fine. Centered on the X position of the trooper at its feet will actually be minus T height, width and height for the box size. And then in terms of motion, no horizontal movement, but its vertical movement, we will have them all fall at fall speed. You know, we could have gravity and all that, but they're in parachutes and stuff. Oh, yeah, we should have parachutes that open. That'll be fun. False. What's wrong with me? Um, I don't know. So the shots go like five. And I guess I want them to go not fall as fast as bullets. Maybe 3.5. And actually, let's call that trooper fall speed. Just in case for particle effects or other stuff, we might use a different number. Trooper fall speed 3.5. And where did that happen? There it was. All right. So that's going through each trooper. We still have to draw the trooper. And let's make the troopers a different color. Troopers are uh, red. Because red is even eviler than orange. And uh, we already have the fill work call. Already moving them. And we could stop them when they hit the bottom of the screen. Let's actually just check and see if they've gone off the bottom of the screen. We're just going to kind of freeze them there. So if they're greater than canvas.height, then we're going to freeze their feet at that position. Yeah, so that'll lock them at the bottom. Okay, double checking how this goes. Oh, no. Some sort of shenanigans already happened. Let's check our developer console, see what's going on. New enemies not defined, 77. Oh, of course. We don't want the has dropped it on the enemy. One on the enemy list. There we go. A little copy-paste magic. Same thing anywhere of new enemy there. Now let's try it again. Survey says. Come on, pop some dudes out. Pop some dudes. Hmm. Something suspicious going on. Not seeing anything. So let's let's debug this problem. We're gonna work through this together. And uh, let's see. So we should be knowing whether or not this is happening. We're gonna console log drop person. And let's just double check this logic. My x is greater than my drop x. My x is less than my drop x. I'm going left or I'm going right. X velocity is the variable that exists. Drop X was decided as a random position along the width of the screen. Has dropped yet was false. Aha! If dropped yet was false, so we haven't dropped yet, then we want to do that stuff. I bet this is going to work now. Okay, here come the planes. Pew, pew, drop person. There's our little statements. Great. Dropping some people. They fall on the ground. I can shoot my cannon. Ba, 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 ba. You can't stop us. We're going to blow you all the way. And again, they drop on the base. You can see why that's kind of problematic. So uh, let's get them to not do that. Ba, 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 ba. Also, I'm finding, um, you know, the semi-auto. Let's make it not semi-auto. Let's have it actually detect hold of space. And we'll just let them pile up down here. So in the same way we did hold left and hold right. Where did we do that? We have some variables here. This is where if we start to separate into other files, well, this will be like input JS. Uh, hold, hold fire equals false. This is where it's advantageous to call something hold with a name uh, equals true. Instead of saying hold space, I'm calling hold fire because what if more than one key we want to fire? Like the mouse later or something. Equals false. Same thing with like left, even though it sounds like it's an error reference. Maybe I want to use WSAD later. So I can map all those to it. So fire will be true, fire will be false. And what I'll now do is inside of our game update as part of handle, I guess it's kind of a handle input thing. Yeah, we're doing hold left and hold right. If hold space, then we're going to spawn a new shot. Of course, this would be lightning fast shots, which heck, let's show you because that's amazing. Oh no, typo somewhere. Told you I'd be rusty today. Told you for spending weeks away. Hold space, not defined. Oh yeah. 
How you know? I just explained to you why we're using hold fire. There it is. All right. Boom. Actually, this looks kind of like the old Akak -Ak attack. It's kind of like one of them I played for DOS, which I'm not entirely opposed to. But let's put a reload speed on it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Cannon reload frames equals three. And reload left equals zero. And so now what I'll do is when we're holding down space, handle input, man, we're already, this is why we start to spread our seven to multiple files. Um, okay. So if reload left is greater than less than or equal to zero, then we're going to spawn the new shot. And in addition to that, we will at that point, set it equal to the number of reload frames. And if reload left is greater than zero, then we'll drain off of it. So little tick timer there will allow us to have not fully auto, but a delay. And if we just want to prove to ourselves that that really is making a difference, if I set this to a more noticeable number like 30, refresh, hold down space, holding down space, you can see I'm getting a way lower rate of fire. And if we make that number back to, I don't know, maybe five is a good compromise number. Bump, 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 bump. There we go. Feeling pretty good. All right, so now, of course, uh, let's get a couple things fixed. Let's get this fall margin over our cannon looking nicer. Right now, the reason they can fall on the cannon or off the edges of the screen is because we're picking any position along the screen to be drop X. So let's figure out where we calculate. Uh, let's get rid of this drop person code. Let's figure out where we deal with the... Mm -hmm. Drop X... So here's where we calculate it. And let's have a couple things, right? Let's define uh, const drop margin from center. And that can equal, we have a player width value already of 50. So player width plus like another buffer of 20, maybe 20 more pixels on either side, maybe 50 on either side. That sounds good. Drop margin from edge. And that might be, so again, the player base is 50. I don't know, let's say like a uh, hundred. It seems kind of rotten if they're dropping too close to the edges. It seems cheap. All right, so there we have these two values. And now we're calculate our drop position. Instead of getting this from the whole width of the screen, let's say var valid pixel range equals canvas dot width minus distance from the center times two minus distance drop margin from edge times two since all the since that amount of pixels is off limits that's our valid pixel range and uh, it's kind of a roundabout way of doing it but i think it should work for us so now if so for starters we can pump that number up by the drop margin from range drop margin from edge do i ever want to do this maybe it's not um because it's going to complicate our calculation from the center so I guess what we'll do there, a few ways we can go about this. You know, let's let's have a kind of a brutal fix to it. Yeah, uh, let's do the brutal fix. Let's say var rand pixel to try drop, and we're gonna enter a do while um, is within range, or maybe we'll do pixel to drop var safe to drop here equals false i think do while scares some people so let's say while safe to here is not the case okay there we go so we'll assume it true bad pixel to drop and doesn't really matter what it is initially there we go now we're starting to make some sense yeah so we're just going to randomly pick a spot until it's invalid uh so Valid pixel to drop. Let's throw an X in there since it's our X position. And trying to do too many shortcuts here. All right, so we're going to pick a random position now over the width of the screen like we did before. And then we're going to validate that position. So if that position is less than enemy spawn oh, edge what's our word drop margin from edge so if it's less than that 
then safe to draw per equals false. Else if, if it's greater than the canvas width minus the margin from edge, then we're unsafe on the other side. Else if the, let's think here, center of the screen width divided by two minus that value, absolute value of it, if that value is less than drop margin from center. Yeah, there we go. Then it's unsafe. All right. So just to walk through this logic again, we've got it dropping from the top. Random position gets grabbed. While it's unsafe, it keeps assuming it's safe unless it pa fails these tests. And then it should only, oop, to then put us in that position. Valid X pixel to drop. There we go. Save. And let's see now, if we start to have them fall a bunch, we shouldn't see any that fall too close to the edges or over our ship, over our base rather. And actually this is something we can test even easier if we increase the enemy spawn frequency. If we go to where the enemies spawn and we have them spawn at 30 times a second, then we'll get a lot more planes and we can kind of do a saturation test and double check like, yeah, this looks like about a hundred pixel margin here, hundred pixel margin there. You can see there's a sizable margin from base from either side. It is actually a little too far from the sides in terms of where our margins are. You can see it's, see it's decreased our drop margin from the edge to 50 and let's let them fall a little bit closer to our base. It's raining men. And uh, yeah, that seems a little bit better, right? That seems fine. Now, okay, now that we're dealing with, even though this is kind of a test amount, obviously this might start to build up a little more if we just let this keep running forever. I mean, a modern machine again can can handle it, it's fine. Uh, but let us start paying attention a little bit to removing things that are off the screen, because, you know, no harm in it. So as you go through these elements and draw them, that's the key again, uh, let's also go back through and remove anything that's ready for removal. And when removing from a list, we wanna go through the list backwards. Minus one, greater than or equal to zero, minus minus, where if that plane has been marked for removal, remove me equals true, or we don't really need to do equals equals true. So if remove me, then we're going to splice it out of the list. Splice at position I, element one. Yeah, there we go. And that's default too when we spawn these planes. Spawn plane, handle enemies. That's not where you're spawning enemy spawn. So as part of creating this enemy, new enemy dot remove me equals false. Cool. We'll do the same thing where we spawn the little characters trooper list. Once again, remove me colon false. So if this characters flag for removal, we're going to remove them. And let's also throw out a console log here. And let's say number of planes, colon, enemy list dot length. And let's just have it spam that number out as this number goes up. And then same trick for our, I guess our infantry aren't, don't ever hit the bottom yet, so we're just gonna let them pile up. Now we wanna flag remove me if it is off the screen. Drop yet. And it really kind of depends on the side. We want to let them spawn off the edge. So let's start to make this code a tad more readable. Let's say var moving left. Unless it's moving right. You can flip the sign easy enough though. Var moving left, var moving right. Greater than. So we can also then check moving left. So we haven't dropped yet. Okay, so that means we've already dropped the person off, which means we're on the second half of our flight. And now we'll say if moving left and enemy list that i dot x is less than, we'll say zero for now, we might check some margin off the edge of the screen later. And I could make this an else if, but I think this is already gonna be convoluted enough as it is, or anytime we do these kind of bi-directional checks on them. 
right, obviously if we're a little more object oriented, then uh, there's other ways we can handle this where this would be a little more self-contained in the plane's knowledge itself. Uh, width goes that way. Well, you know, like I say, we're just kind of using dumb object containers right now. So moving left to right, then we want to flag it for removal. So remove me equals true. And let's see what comes up this console. Um, the numbers should obviously be skyrocketing at first because we're spawning a bunch of planes. And then once they start hitting the edges, there we go, look at that. It's staying pretty roughly consistent at about 200 on the screen. Ooh, although why are we spawning characters off the edges of the screen? Hmm. That does not seem right, does it? Enemies dropped yet's false. What has happened to spawn our characters where they're getting spawned? Let us uh, quickly comment the section out. I think part of the value of being a little slower today is you can follow along what's going on. What has happened to our drop logic? Moving left. And we, oh, we crisscross, I crisscross these cases. Left and right. And let's make a habit then of kind of a little personal convention. Left before right. It's going to reduce chance of bugs later. And so this should fix the drop position. Sure enough, there it's fixed. And we'll bring back the plane removal. And just, you know, cough enough that it seems like it's in better shape. Uh, let us now remove, we already moved the splice console log. Let's reduce the spawn frequency of the planes back to a reasonable number. Every two seconds, maybe? It's going to be pretty intense. Pop, 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 pop. There we go. Let's let the cannon turn a little bit more than that. So let's see, cannon ang limit. Think for a second. Six, eight. Let's see how that looks. Oh, it's the opposite of what is good. Um, so, okay, so instead of being times 0 0.25, we want to be a little more generous. We say times four or five. So quite a bit of slant, although that still seems pretty fair. I think by that point, you know, we can let him pass us. We always tweak that number later. It's going to be easier for us to tune, though, is this kind of as a percentage, where 0.5 would let us go all the way to the bottom, than it would be in another format. So there we go. Now let's get our shots to actually uh, remove the planes and remove the characters, now that we have the removal flag, at least on the planes. And that's probably part of handling shots, rather than handling the enemies. We could do it either way. But I think of that as being shot handling. And this is where, too, if we wanted to be optimizing our code somehow, we wouldn't be doing, you know, n times n search space. But it's going to be fine for this game. Totes fine. Okay, there's that, there's that. Enemy list, trooper list. Uh, we have the remove me flag on the players. We just didn't do them yet. Remove that console log, go through the trooper list. Pop, pop, pop. And so now for each one of these lists... We want to check and see if the shot is inside the figure. Now, this is where it's going to start to hurt us a little more. We're not using a consistent origin point or any sort of level of abstraction. But we're all right. We got this. So if that's greater than, so for the enemy shots or for the planes, I think we spawn them from, we draw the planes from the middle middle. So if it's less than the, at i, dot x minus enemy width divided by 2, so horizontally, we are within their range. And actually, let's check vertically first, because that's more often going to rule out the shots. Not going to make a huge difference, but be slightly conscientious. Conscientious? Consci I can't say words today. Just got back from too many hours of flying. All right, so there's a... There we go. So in that case, then enemy list... At I remove me equals true. Cool. And then we'll do the same contest for the paratrooper, except the paratrooper, we're basing it on where the feet are. So greater than the full EH and less than just the Y, but otherwise the same, using trooper list instead of enemy list for each one of these cases. Pop, 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 pop. And then for enemy width, we're going to replace with TW. E H place with T H and trooper list. 
very mature. Now we probably also want to remove the shots in this case, which also realize that the shots are not yet being removed from the world. Remove me equals true. So when we hit a target, the shot's going to stop when it hits him. Also makes the shots just look more like more solid, like they landed. And uh, we'll do a backwards list splice, which I'm just going to copy the same thing from there. And go over the shot list. Shot list, shot list, shot list. Da -na 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 -na. And when we spawn shots from space being held, we're also going to set that remove me to false by default. See how we do. Oop! Something busted. Once again, checking out that console log. Can I read property Y on line 150? Okay, shot list at Y. Enemy list. Now the shot list should have a Y position. Which one's undefined? Oh, I know what's going on. We need to check each shot against each enemy troop. Naturally. In which case, then we can't be using the same variable for them. So let's start to differentiate those. This will be E for enemy. And so now for enemy list, we'll be using the E instead of the I for the index. Which maybe I should have done in the first place, but, you know, so it goes. Uh, and then for troopers, we'll use a T for trooper. So we can keep straight which one it makes sense should be different. T, T, T. Trooper list. Trooper list. There we go. That makes more sense. All right, so now we got people falling out the planes, got the shots going. Let me try to get that infantry. Oh, I missed the infantry. I feel like the infantry are moving a little fast, don't you? Hmm, I feel like my skills. There we go. Cleaned up, cleaned up a couple infantry dudes, a couple paratroopers. I guess not. I don't know. Is infantry still paratroopers? They are, right? Surely. 101st infantry. Par I, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I can shoot the planes now. I can shoot the units down. I should also have the shots vanish when they hit the edge of the screen, because right now they're going forever. And now we have a good way to do that. So. Let's do that. And uh, if the shot list is off the screen on the horizontal or the vertical, uh, other horizontal or the vertical height, no, y less than zero, and we don't really care to check the bottom of the screen because we can't shoot down, then remove me equals false. And I'll just throw in there that assumption since that's kind of a little slightly unusual. Note. Not checking screen bottom, since we can't shoot down. In case later on we want some sort of arc shots, grenade launcher shots, something, things with gravity, then we'd be fixed. Uh, and so now let's actually, let's let's add some counters to the screen to help us figure out, like, okay, but are we accumulating objects indefinitely? And again, these little infantry dudes, almost certainly. Uh, but let's display those numbers. So let's go to where our draw code's happening and update. Update's staying reasonably clean. Let's say like debug draw, because that's a function that's going to evolve over time. Function debug draw. Start off by setting our fill style. Canvas context. Fill style equals what's going to be visible? Cyan. Cyan's going to be visible. And then let's do is it fill text? Draw text? Is it X and Y first? I am so out of practice. Uh, Word. Let's just first test and see. Does it say word? It does not, does it? Is it draw? Is there? No, it's. Let's just look at the console log. Draw up tools. Nope, it's not mad about anything. We're calling the function fill text. Is it word in the next and Y? Maybe? There it is. All right. That makes more sense. So then here we're going to print out the value of uh, shots plus shot list dot length. This will work a little better than the uh, console logging since it's going to be a little more rapid. And then, like, I don't know, 120 down. Planes. Enemy list. You know what? Let's go ahead and let's do this before the code gets longer. Replace enemy list with plane list. Mm, you know, I'm not going to do this because we have PXPY and EXEY. We're going to leave it enemy for now. It's going to do a replace, but let's keep it. So, shots and planes. So, we can see now the counters. And we see the shots hit things, which they should all go back down to zero. Ooh, shots leaving the screen is not actually killing them yet. Let's figure out why. I'm sure somebody watching this already spotted it. 
So shot list X. Oh, false. That'll do it. Out of practice, folks. Okay. Fire some shots. Get the shots off the screen. And should go back down to zero. Yep. Planes should stay roughly constant, give or take. 13, 14, 13, 14, cool. Now, these little infantry dudes on the ground, of course, should be walking towards the base if they make it down. Um, and Joel, I feel like there, there's lots of tuning we want to fix, right? I mean, the, I feel like the infantry is a little too small to shoot. Let's make them bigger. 12 by 18. 6 by, uh, ratio seems weird for a person. 11 by 18. Um, the planes then may be bigger by proportion. 60 by... 30. I think the troops fall way too fast. Doesn't feel like they're falling on parachutes. Oh, yeah. We want them to have to open their parachutes, right? Okay, that feels more like they're falling with a parachute. Let's have before and after parachute. Fall speed. Uh, no shoot. So that can be closer to that 3.5, maybe. And then when we get the shoot, we'll make them even slower, like 1.5. No shoot. With shoot. And so now on the infantry, when they spawn out the door, where do we do it? Spawn, shot list, that's not, that's not them. Okay, where do we do our handling our planes? Paratroopers get spawned, cool. All right, so then here we'll say, shoot drawn. Is shoot drawn equals false? And then we'll also come up with a random shoot height, just like we did for the drop X position. Uh, we'll say like, shoot y equals math dot random times Ooh, we can do this just like we did uh shoot thickness plus shoot margin yeah just like we did for the uh where the planes spawn we'll have some constants for that is shoot drawn and shoot y let's define where those things would be const const so the shoot thickness uh, and that's going to be the area where they can drop their thing. Uh, let's see. So the screen's 600 tall. So maybe like 100 band. And 300 will put them squarely in the bottom half of the screen uh, from the top of the margin. So from the middle of the screen down to 100 pixels will be their... their Ooh! Ow. Sorry, folks. Um, will be there where they'll cut their shoots. So, okay. So we go to where they're handling the troops. And uh, where do we do the troop handling stuff? Handle enemies for each plane, paratroopers. Okay, so in these paratroopers, trooper fall speed, that's going to depend on whether or not their chute's open. Which, let me throw some things down here. I guess I don't actually need those here. So if dot shoot is shoot drawn. We can use a tr is it ternary operators that what they call these things so if shoot drawn then we want to fall with fall with shoot else no shoot there we go and we can base that on whether or not we are above or below the value of our target thing so if our y value is Greater than shoot y on our character. So if we fall below it, but here's the difference. We actually want to trap this and only happen one time. And the reason for that's because in a lot of these kind of games, we can shoot the shoots off. And so we want to make sure we can handle that case. So if we cross that line, then we draw the shoot. And let's say already got drawn equals true and so we can use that to lock us out of doing it twice and we'll make that a part of when we spawn our character pushing the troop on there let's also say shoot drawn false and we should also probably draw them a little bit differently when they have their shootout so let's look at where we draw that character which is here. Uh, let's actually move them down here so it will reflect the state of their shoot that frame. And I guess either way, we're going to draw the main character. Except if this person's shoot is drawn, then we will also uh, 
And again, so the idea is that issue drawn is going to get flipped when there's a parachute there. Already drawn is going to lock it from getting re-added uh, if they get knocked off. So if the shoe's drawn, then we're going to draw... Ooh, I guess we now we can't use the same color for all of them. So it's, let's flip to red for the bad guy and then white for the parachute. Maybe gray to sort of look like our player base. And so it's going to start from... Ooh, we need some variables here. Um, TY const. We'll just spell these out. Parachute W equals, I guess, the same width. Maybe a little bit wider. Heck, let's base it on it. Uh, trooper width plus four. Seems sensible. Parachute height. Uh, and this one doesn't need to be based on their height, but it's proportion looking at. So if they're eight tall, this might be like five. And I don't know. Beats me. Let's go to where we draw those troopers. And obviously, if this program starts to grow, we would, I would, and I will, move this into multiple files. But right now, it's kind of just faster for me to hop around in one. So there's our width we're going to draw from. We're going to draw from that amount offset centered from the Y position, which is the height. That's the top of the character. That's the top of the parachute then. Parachute width and height. Let's put width and height on their lines in X, Y pair. And yeah, let's see how this looks. So people come out on the planes, planes drop some dudes, dudes pop out their chutes. That is way too small for parachutes. That is ridiculous. I am upset with myself right now. All right, um, is 10 too many? Nine, eight, you can't see what I'm typing. All right, nine, let's try nine. Pop, pop. All right, I can still probably go bigger on those. Let's make their shoots plus eight. Their thickness, 14. I mean, they're parachutes, right? They're parachutes. And again, this will all be eventually graphics and art, but whatever. Pop, 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 pop. Okay, cool. So now we don't yet have a way. You can see shots go right through the parachutes. So part of the way these games work, right, is that we should be able to shoot off those parachutes. So let's check for that. Where we uh, check for the enemy collision, we can also there check for the parachute stuff all right so where we're checking shots against the paratrooper that's flagging the removal but so that means that we were not on top of the character itself which should get the priority probably over the parachute so otherwise then if the shot overlaps the parachute and here's where because of these shenanigans of our offsets we might actually want to kind of cook these into the character and update them on the character moves let's see how we feel about that yeah maybe that's maybe that's for the best let's think about that for a second so where we draw that parachute by the way real quick kind of a bookmark technique uh where are we at man this is already getting too messy we start to hit the margins too here right for where we like can't keep it straight in our heads which is the limit we're pushing up all right so we're gonna find it there so that's where we calculate those spots. Let's actually save those values onto the shoot itself or onto the character. And we'll say like shoot X equals that shoot Y. And this will be the X, Y top left corner. We'll be like that. In this way, we can use the same values for the collision that we used for draw without having to calculate it twice in two places. Because even if we're not going to go all object oriented and have it computed on the thing itself, we would like for these to, uh, you know, stay in sync with each other. So, okay. Now, what we're checking for then is that we are above the shoot Y. We're below the shoot Y, and we're above the shoot Y. Well, shoot y minus we call it shoot height parachute h undo parachute h cool uh and if we're greater than paratrooper shoot x and we are less than the width plus parachute width then we can knock the parachute off which is not the same as defeating the character. 
this is why we have that separate value. So now we'll say parachute, let's see, is shoot drawn equals false. So the shoot's gonna get rid of here because we shot the shoot off. And so now we can wanna check this special case between these two for the falling. So where we do the speed falling with a shoot, fall with shoot there. And now we can check where they hit the ground. So this is where they hit the ground. And we'll check and see if is shoot drawn for this trooper. Then they land, else they get removed because they fell without the shoot, which is a little gruesome, but is kind of how these games have always been done. And we're just going to go with it for today because people expect that functionality and conventions are worth something. Obviously, they should also take their shoots off when they hit the ground, but you know, one step at a time, people. All right, let me see if I can actually take a shoot off intentionally. Uh, uh, oh no, it looks like I should have got that one. All right, let's figure out why. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I should have got some of these. Let's make their shoots bigger so it's easier to test real quick. So uh, let's see, parachute width and height, 28, 24, comically big shoots. Poof, All right? This will just help me make sure that my shots just aren't cutting right through a corner. And sure enough, some sort of shenanigans are happening here where I'm never getting it. Or, okay, let's rule out where it could be happening, right? Parachute. Okay. So shoot X and Y are getting calculated here for the trooper based on that character's location and centering the parachute, taking the position from their feet up to the top, and it's drawing the rectangle according to the x, y, width, and height. So that should align with where a shot should be tested. Here, if we checked and saw our shot didn't go through the trooper itself, else, then does the same shot, x and y on that shot, go between the height, top y, greater than that, minus, less than, ooh, less than, there we go, plus the parachute height. I bet that was it. Let's try it again. And let them fall. Pop, 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 pop. There we go. Neom, pop, pop. Although it looks like they're not actually getting removed, does it, when they fall to the bottom? Let's figure out why that's the case. Probably doing the removing on the wrong thing. No, triple this removed me. He's getting flagged here. If I'm greater than the canvas, which should be my Y position, then I should be getting flagged for removal. Console.log, removing unit. Plus I. And let's double check if that's actually getting hit. Developer tools. Oh, so they should only do it if I shoot the parachute off. Easier said than done when my aim is terrible. Well, okay, removing unit 747. Interesting. Something clearly did not go as expected. So what's going on here? So we're lower than the bottom, we hit remove me. Maybe two hit the ground, let's try it again with just one. Terrible. Too good at this game. Neom, we're moving at 17, 14. Interesting that we're getting more, now I guess it's probably what's happening is I'm shooting off more than one. Getting more than removed, 36. Yeah, so it certainly thinks that it is. Let's, let's reduce this stream of them to something more reasonable. Uh, interval, one in every four seconds. Let's just double check what's going on because it, it seems to think that they keep falling below. Even though we're setting the remove me. Oh! Uh, no, that's, that should be fine. Trooper, remove me. Shoots drawn, we hit the ground. Changing trooper list at I, and it's removed me on that element. Oh, setting it to false. There we go. Welcome back to the US, me. All right, so now we should see them vanish when their feet hit the ground if we knock off the parachute. Have a plane come in, drop the character, open parachute, cut the parachute off, pop, got him. And now for our debug draw, we can have it also show the number of troops. Two 
through, let's see, troop list, 140. Let's just say like bar line height equals, I don't know, 15. Line height times zero. This will make it easier for me to add more lines. Or you know what, let's do it even better than that. Var uh, draw text out y equals 100. Kind of a little debugging trick for this kind of debug output. Plus line height. And this way I can easily add more lines to it without having to, or I can rearrange the order or cut lines out, not have to go back and futz with these constants that I'm drawing at. There we go. Oop. Unless, <laughs> unless I goofed somehow. Uh, let's see, draw out y, comma y plus equals line height, line height, text out y. All right, what's the complaint? Developer tools, first thing is always check the console, don't expect a token. Oh no, oh, I just accidentally typed another one of these somehow. Refresh, all right, there we go. So we got our three numbers, shots, planes, and troops. And we'll watch troop get spawned. And if I shoot troop, troop falls, goes from two to one. If I shoot the troop directly, goes back to zero. Yeah, okay, so we have some sensible numbers happening there for those values. Uh, parachutes, again, feel too too big. Maybe it's also the infantry field too small still to shoot. Let's keep messing with those. Troop width, maybe I'm being not brazen enough. Let's make them 20 and like 30, maybe. And then the plane, so then this give us a bigger drop margin. It's looking like they're falling out the side. The planes then should be definitely bigger. Make them look more impactful. They shouldn't be the same height as the infantry. I, mean, I guess maybe not a whole lot more. You know, they carry infantry and the ceiling's not that high above them. And then, um, let's go on. The parachute's still kind of wacky, right? So let's make that not quite as oversized. I will say, though, that it does feel more parachute when it's big and it is more fun when you can knock them off. So uh, we'll keep that 15 ish. Let's see how that looks. And again, we got a picture. This is where a little PNG image would go in a later version of the game. Bonk. No, oh, I don't know why I shot that enemy too. So the plane should probably be a little bit longer. Parachutes <laughs> seem a little small. And the infantry seem a little big. All right, so parachutes seem a little small. Back to 15, back to 20. And there's a good amount of game programming. It's just this kind of fiddling. Um, I guess maybe it should be taller. And then the infantry still seems a little large, which is good to go back and forth. A lot of how we tune things by going too big and then too small until we find kind of a happy medium. And their length, as I said, mentioned should be wider. Alrighty. Now, another observation, right, is that we can see the planes pop onto the screen since they spawn right at the edge when we draw them from the center. So let's offset them when we spawn them. So if we're spawning from the left side, then we actually want to spawn it from negative enemy width divided by two. And if we want to go to the right side, we actually want to draw them off half to the right. Let's double check. Now we should see planes come in smoothly off the sides. Smoothly off the side. Wait for one to come off the left side. Random chance every time. Smoothly off the right. Oh, and now we see them vanish when they go right off the edge. So we'll do the opposite for the other margin. Which, at some point, we could calculate to... Uh, for the left and right edges for safety, but we'll just keep those simple for now. So going through the planes, and if we move off of the left side of the screen by half a plane or off the right side by half a plane, only then do we do the removal. That's up. there. And then the last thing we're gonna do, right, is we're gonna have them take off their parachutes when they land, switch into another mode where they're then walking to the base and then damage the base and then take down our health until we run out of health and then reset the game. And then we're done. That's all we're doing. All right, so we got these, and again, planes now smoothly go off the sides of the screen. Looks better. All right, bop, 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 bop. Man, such a characteristic sound of these games. I'm excited when our team later gets to adding some sound effects to, to this thing. Although most people who code the games for the club do a much nicer job than what I'm doing. This is obviously, again, quick demonstration because I know we like to share what we're doing. Um, so if we look at where we're spawning those troops, um, and this is obviously kind of an ugly place here where we're doing this spawn. Let's actually just make this into a function that's like spawn troop for enemy list at i. A little bit ugly. Be fine. Function spawn troop from plane. And this will let us keep that a little bit more separated. X. 
Y. These other values don't actually matter to us at all. But the reason I did that is because we want to have another variable we're going to add to our player that all these will get refactored into a proper class when we set up an actual class system for our dudes. And that will be uh, is walking. So by default, that's a false. But when we land on the ground, so where we cross the threshold, let's mark this a little more semantically, landing on ground. So then here is walking is true. And now we can use a different behavior if we're walking. So if we're walking, let's actually short circuit in that case, the rest of our character. is walking and so we always want to draw the character let's actually we'll put the parachute after in the part that gets skipped skip rest of draw and motion code which are only for air travel and so if we're in walking mode then we want to walk towards the base so if trooper list that i dot x is less than center of the canvas or we'll just check player x since we've already done that so we are left of the base, then we're going to walk towards the base. Uh, I guess we'll call this troop walk speed, which of course when we factor into class, we'd take out of that format. And if we're greater than the center, then we're going to go left troop walk speed. Let's make that another constant somewhere. I don't know. That's the enemy's trooper margins somewhere around here. Const. Oh, these should be const too. Troop walk speed equals, so the fall speed with a parachute, if we look at that speed, that was like, what, one and a half or something. I think one. Maybe two for now, for starters, so they start off fast. And uh, now when they fall, we should see it down here while we're coding. Then they should walk towards the middle of the base. And if they get within the, within the base, then we're in trouble. Math.absolute value of their distance from, see, oh, we landed and walked to the base. It's going to go right inside. So if their distance, so minus player x is less than p width divided by 2 minus the margin of their width, trooper width divided by 2. So they're inside the base, completely inside the base. Then we're going to remove that trooper at i. And we'd add some sort of particle effects if something happened at this point. Remove me equals true. And as well as hurting the player. So let's say like player HP minus minus. And like if player HP less than or equal to zero, then reset game where those two things don't exist yet, but they're about to. So uh, var player HP equals three. Debug draw will have this information in it, which of course eventually would be Part of an actual UI instead of a debug output. Base strength player HP. So I get printed out. And um, oh, we need a reset function. Is it just called reset game? Reset game. Yeah, yeah. There it is. See, I just a little quick bookmark. Reset game. <laughs> and then inside here, so what do we got to do to reset the game? Well, it's going to be a bunch of the stuff that we before handled, let's see, up in this kind of code up here. What all is going to change? Well, for one thing, we're going to nuke our lists. So reset game. And how much more is there really if we nuke our lists? That might be it. Oh, let's also, let's have a score while we're actually adding this other stuff. Um, bar score equals zero. And so in that case, then when our shots handling, let's go to handle shots where our shots hit the enemies, then we're going to, so let's see, so we've, here we shot an enemy directly, and so that's worth some amount of points. Uh, enemy, let's, let's, let's go with like values for these that are constants. Score for uh, plane shot, right? Const score for plane shot. This way we can come back later and tune these values. Maybe that's worth like 100 points. And then what are the other things we shoot for trooper shot? Um, we might do different values if they have a parachute line. If they're above that point, maybe it's worth bonus or something, but I don't know. 
Um, 50, uh, and let's say parachute will be a bonus since it's harder to hit. And if you can somehow hit the paratrooper after hitting the parachute, then you'd get like extra points for it. That all kind of makes sense to me. Um, yeah. All right. Score plus equals that. And so here's where the... I like to kind of leave this white space, otherwise the notation kind of overlaps with it, uh, the new line. So score for... This is the trooper. And then this will be the... Oh, I do not like where that break is happening here. We'll just take this down to its own line. Kind of an arbitrary artifact of my editor width today. Okay, and that's going to be score for parachute shot. And then because we're scoring the parachute, we're not going to score them when hit the ground. Be kind of double double counting. Uh, yeah. Oh, we should show that score. So let's go to our debug draw stuff. Now I'm just going to call this hit points. It's kind of a rubbish number. Uh, score. Score. Yeah. All right. So score zero. Pop, 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 pop. A lot of the games I've seen, like Ak Ak or Night Raid, I think they actually cost you points to fire. You might experiment with that a little bit. Kind of encourage you to be a little more conservative on your air shots. There's 200. I should let them drop troops. What am I doing? I'm a terrible tester. All right. So boink. Popped it out. Hit him. 250. Let's try to shoot off parachute. Oh, video games. All right. Oh, no. Hit the parachute. There we go. 375. That makes sense. Okay. So now let's let this one get to our base. Hit points goes to two. Oh no, not from this side. I want to test one from the right side. Hit points goes to one. Let's just set up kind of a force field over here. Ooh, got the parachute and then the person. That felt satisfying to get bonus points. And then let's get one from the right. Bop, reset the game. All right, because that has cleared all three of the rays, which is kind of good enough for this purpose. And uh, we can see all the values went back to zero, so we're kind of in good shape. And I guess this game kind of exists, right? Like, we could do a lot of other things, and we will as a club. You're going to, over the weeks ahead, we're going to add all kinds of other graphics to it, sound effects, and special features. A few members have already chimed in that they want to do some, like, special stuff for how the turret's controlled, maybe some power-ups, different kinds of enemies that move in different kind of ways. But core gameplay is here. we got an ak ak attack kind of paratrooper-looking game. Uh, so, yeah, that's fun. Um, so what we're going to be doing to develop this is we're developing it in Gamkido Club. Uh, you can find out about that by going to gamkido.com. And uh, it's a club where we build games together. If you just want to kind of learn the basics of how programming works, if you're watching this video and you're just totally, totally lost, go to codeyourfirstgame.com. That'll take you to my free course that's used by now almost 100,000 people around the world. It'll introduce you to the basics of what I did today. Um, there's a lot of other things you can do to organize your code as you start developing more of it, just putting it into different files, doing some refactoring, cleaning up some stuff. But for core functionality, often I'll just throw together some prototype like this is a starting point and then very rapidly start splitting it apart, breaking it out, making it a little nicer as you start making it more welcoming to other people to get involved, and it becomes kind of a foundation to work from of basic functionalities there. Ooh, hit points didn't reset when I reset the player. Bug found. Uh, hit points equals start hit points. Just so I don't have to hard code the number three in two places. Const start hit points equals three. And HP equals start hit points. Now, by the way, I'm going to attach a paste bin to this YouTube video uh, to our source code. So if you want to look at exactly what I typed today, then you're not under any obligation to like, I don't know, retype this all verbatim. Uh, it's asking for trouble of all kinds of, every time people try to type stuff in these videos, they got all these like capitalization errors and they use text edit on Mac and have smart quotes turned on by default. It's just, it's a mess. Um, but check out the paste bin code down below in the description. I'll probably also link to the game working live and exactly the code as I've typed it, which you can view source on the page and check out. But uh, yeah, that's it for now. If you want to work on this game with us, by all means, come check us out at gamkido.com. If you want to join the club or go to codeyourfirstgame.com. It's a free Udemy course, codeyourfirstgame.com. Check it out and you'll be familiarized with some basics of game programming. Oh no! So one last thing. I just realized player HP, this is why you should always test stuff. Um, when I reset, I want to reset player HP, not hit points. Saved it, refreshing it, and now we can double check the bugs fixed. But once again, uh, you know, part of programming. It's part of what I'm hoping today by having a less rushed thing, less perfect, showing some steps or refreshing in between, um, showing some troubleshooting in the console debug log, giving a better sense for like, kind of like the process flow of just weaving together functionality for a game. Um, those are perfectly normal parts of programming. You know, when you're making games, you're going to have the same thing happen. And now we'll just double check that hit points will go two and then one and then pop. Yeah, perfect reset back to three hit points. And later on, we'll do a nicer interface and stuff. 
But that's it for now. Thanks again, y'all.